uh, coach opening statement. Sure. Um, first of all, congratulations to Johns Hopkins on a fantastic year. Pete Milliman, uh, Jameson Kesterer, John Crowley, the staff, the team. Um, they showed us how good they could be when they came down to Charlottesville in early March. And uh, we've watched uh, and admired as they ran through the Big Ten regular season undefeated. Um, and uh, we want to congratulate them. I know they're hurting. Um, but it also, for us, this is what makes it such a big deal because we know how good the Hopkins team is uh, to win this game today. Um, as I alluded to when I came up here, you saw two teams completely empty the tank out there. Uh, ben Ware picking up 10 ground balls. I'm watching him in a second overtime go back in on defense, and I'm just begging they don't dodge him because Ben has spent everything he's got in his pursuit of all those extra possessions. Um, obviously, there's two other men here and many men down in our locker room who just gave everything they could in a game that, um, you know, it's, uh, it's the way, you know, it's, it's the style we want to play. We want to pressure ride. We want to push transition. We want to be aggressive on defense. We're going to go man down a few times. It's a game I grew up with, inherited from the Onondaga people. That's the way we're going to play this game uh, at the University of Virginia. Um, and um, I think the, the last thing I'll say here in my opening statement is just the power of belief. I've been on some sidelines where you can tell it's not going our way today. But not today, even though we never led until the very end. This team kept up a positive voice. And I want to tell you, Matt Nunes couldn't have been the most, I don't, there was no one else more positive voice than Matt Nunes. And what a credit to him after getting pulled, giving up four goals early in that game. And that's, uh, he's an ex he exemplifies uh, the type of men that we have in the UVA men's lacrosse program. Thank you. Question for the student athletes. Uh, Connor, you walked us through the, the game winning goal. Well, they get it on your stick. I imagine you were planning to get to the cage there. Yeah, first off, I just have to, to credit our defense. They give us so many opportunities in overtime. And, you know, it was kind of frustrating. We wanted to close it for them, and they just kept giving us opportunities. So credit goes to them. Uh, and then Coach Cassis, you know, he drew up a, a great play there at the end. And, uh, you know, the, the five guys around me executed, and they made my job, my job really easy. Choose the other way around here. Usually the offense fails out the defense. You know, so <laughs> once in a while, we get to help you out. Um, you guys are down 4 nothing, uh, kind of out of the gate. Kind of looks like you kind of stay level headed and keep fighting to stay in. I mean, I really think it goes back to what Coach Tiffany said. It's, it's belief. And, you know, there was something about our sideline today. I, I know the guys on the field had that belief, but you could just feel this energy, you know, from our sideline. And like, I was feeding off of it. I'm sure the other guys on the field were feeding off. It's just like this, this do, do or die mindset. And we're just not, we're not leaving here with a, with a loss. And, um, you know, whether that was true or not was, was a whole other thing. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you could feel that belief, and, and that's all that mattered. Hey, Ben, uh, if my math is correct, you held Hopkins without a goal. Twenty-two fifty-seven. What was the key on the defensive end, and you know, how would you describe that group's performance? Yeah, I think. Um, I mean, our short sixty committees: Jaeger, Chiz, Erdman, Wills. I mean, all played a phenomenal game. We were we were debating who we should pull, and you know, who should get a short stick. It was something we were concerned about going to the game with our game plan, and they just played phenomenal, and it, it was it was awesome to see. And them being able to kind of stymie their own middies like that, let us pull is just. Locked on defense, and it was an awesome team effort. Been for years, like last game, midfield had a little real production, but Hopkins calls him like four goals, now he zero. What was different about today's matchup compared to earlier? Yeah, I think um, we we kind of changed how we, we play picks a little bit, just being more confrontational. Chase Yeager. Just talking about Chase Yeager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't give away the freaking. <laughs> Uh, yeah, our, our D-Mid is just confrontational ball, and LSMs too. It's something I think uh, me and Mitch have been working on being, you know, dominant on-ball defenders and owning our matchups, um, and, you know, just going off that. Ben, when you're playing that much defense, you know, over time, it feels, probably feels like more than it really is. But what's that tension like, and, and was it just a matter of kind of getting, you know, one moment, one moment, one moment, and just trying to get back? Yeah, and I think uh, like our close defense did such a good job. You know, Schroeder the whole time was like, "Where don't ball watch? Just watch a man. Where don't ball watch?" <laughs> Which was awesome because you know I was fighting for breaths and just knowing that they were supporting me and telling me what to do. Like it made it easy. I didn't really have to think. Um, yeah. Okay, this is your first uh, 
game at this uh, level with this chance to go to the Final Four. What was the uh, feeling, the emotion like? And for you, you've talked about the kind of team that Connor is. What was it like for you to see him score that goal? Um, <clears throat> I'd say first of all, like these are the moments you know you dream of as a kid. Um, you know, it's each each day that you know you start early in the season, early in the fall, and you know each day you're coming out and it's it's a new new experience and it's something even cooler. And you know, being able to play at this this awesome venue with a chance to go to the Final Four was you know something I've dreamed about for a long time. Um, and then being able to watch Connor. Um, you know, finish that goal. Like he's he's been a role model to me this whole year, and you know I don't think I'd be able to you know do anything at this at this level without the guidance um, that I've gotten from him. Um, so you know he's been an unbelievable role model for me and Peyton as well, and you know all the upperclassmen. So um, I'm just really grateful to those guys for what you know they've taught me how to how to be on and off the field, how to be a Virginia lacrosse player, and um, you know kind of prepares more than anyone else, and you know that was just an example of that preparation coming to fruition. Connor, when you go out for the overtime period, does it occur to you that your career could go, is going to go one way or the other here? You're either going to hang it up or you live to fight another way, or you're trying to push that stuff out of your head? You, you try not to think about it. Um, again, it, it goes back to that belief, and you know, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right, and our defense just kept, make, kept making stops, and uh, yeah, you, obviously you think about it a little bit, but uh, again, it goes back to that belief, and um, you try to erase any of those thoughts away from your from your mind. Um, okay, what would you say to Connor after you know, I saw you finally restrict over to him after the celebration, like the celebration? Uh, I just thanked him for, you know, scoring that goal. Told him I love him and <laughs> was excited to play and get back to work on Sunday tomorrow. But we've heard good things about Kyle uh, and the work he's done in practice in the cage behind that. Um, how confident are you guys in him and, and when Coach made that move? Yeah, I think uh, you know we have two great goalies, and I think our defense as a whole is in a great spot right now. Um, like we focus on owning the crease and you know making them shoot shots that our goalies want to see. And I think you know whoever's in net, we have full confidence in. And you know Kyle played an amazing game today, and it was awesome to see. I honestly just couldn't believe it. To be honest, it's uh. You know, Corms and I were talking the other day, and we were like, we haven't, I don't think we ever won an overtime game here at UVA. And so, obviously, neither have I, neither him or I had ever scored an, uh, an OT goal. And the fact that two days ago we were talking about that and just that moment, um, you know, <laughs> I'm not a big crier, but I just started crying. I was like, I, I just honestly couldn't believe it. And uh, just to be a part of the UVA and this tradition of the lacrosse program, again, I've been watching it since I was 10, 11 years old. And to have a moment like this with, but this team was uh, in that venue was was unbelievable. Wow, we haven't won an overtime game since nineteen. I could be I could be wrong, but no, I think you're right. Yeah. We, we were at five and zero oh in nineteen, and that's it's, it's been a long one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! What are your impressions just in this venue? And obviously, yeah. Um, yeah, it was incredible. Um, the atmosphere was unbelievable. Credit to uh, Towson and the NCAA for putting on an awesome event. Um, and, you know, credit to the fans there. I mean, it was loud. Um, it, it was loud down there. And, um, you know, I think we have the best fans in the country, and they showed out today. So, um, you know, it was a really cool experience. And um, looking forward to seeing what it's going to be like next week. One last question for the student athletes. Just for, for all three of you guys, what is the emotion of, of knowing that you uh, – are getting to Philadelphia, which I know is the goal of the year starting. Excitement. Yeah, it's, yeah, excitement. <laughs> Go with that. Nothing else. Thank you. You got it. Go. Coach can stand. I'll stick around, fellas. Thank you, guys. You still have your GPS catalyst. <laughs> Racking up those numbers. <laughs> Yeah. Does it cross your mind that maybe it's just in your day? Uh, not, I didn't get to the point where maybe it's not our day, but I'm like, wh when's Peyton going to start doing what Peyton Cormier does? You know, how many times do we hit him? Now, granted, we throw the ball into him sometimes when there's almost no angle because he's, you know, Mr. Miracle in there. He can handle anything and score with almost no angle. But that was just like, 
Yeah, th those, that was surprising. I'll give Chase Erlin big time credit for all those saves he made, especially that one on Boyden when it was one on one after he got another failed clear and got some transition. But uh, yeah, you start, you start looking around like, hmm, yeah, we, 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 we got to crack the code here pretty soon, right, Peyton? Like, Today, what was the reason for the quick move? Did you see it coming during the week? And what's the plan going forward? Yeah, it's, um, part of, it's mostly because Kyle Morse has been playing better. We have a process with our men's lacrosse program of the depth chart. And uh, I've alluded to it in the past. And we evaluate it weekly. And so how you practice can push you up or down the depth chart. Obviously, how you do on game day has a bigger probably chip there. But it's something that's important to us. So we've been seeing Kyle playing better. And we actually talked about it more this week than we have any other week this year. Um, and, you know, there was actually one or two coaches who were thinking, maybe we should start Kyle. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. First start and sort of like quarterfinals against Johns Hopkins? You know, especially for a guy from Gilman? You know, this is a big, 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 big moment. And um, just a couple, a couple outside shots went in from 15 yards low and, um, and said, you know what? The Matt Metz, it, let's, let's go with the guy who's been practicing better. And so Kyle Morris had earned it during the week. We, it was just my fault for maybe fighting my own process of the depth chart. <laughs> and I said, okay, the depth chart said it's Kyle. Here we go. And so there was no hesitation because, because of the process we have as coaches in evaluating, going through stats of practice. Everything was saying Kyle should be the starter this week. And, um, and then those, the, the first six minutes was like, yeah, Lawrence, you should have followed your process. Yeah, that's a really good. Yeah, we 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 got a, a a goalie battle, don't we now? And so we'll see how practice goes this week. Now it's a shorter week, obviously, being in a Sunday slot with a Saturday game and leaving Thursday. So there might only be one real data point uh, of practice. Um, I don't know if we can have two intense practices this week. So yeah, it'll be a short data set. Well, you've obviously seen Connor work in May for, for four years. Yeah. Is there something that even now? <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't it amazing what he's done? You know, he he he, uh, he sashayed into the lacrosse world his redshirt first year in 2021 and blew us all away what he did in those four games, didn't he? Um, and now with a ton more of attention and everyone studying film of him, he keeps elevating his game. Um, he's scoring a lot of goals left-handed now, including that game winner. And uh, it's... Um, because, you know, and, and he's talked to McCabe about it. Uh, McCabe, you know, people are going to study a lot of film on you. They're going to take away the knowns. you got to develop the rest of your game. And seeing, seeing Connor continue to elevate because he just loves watching film and studying other great players. Um, it's, a, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, here he is with 3-1 and one today. That, that's it's not what you'd expect, Connor versus a really good team defense by Hopkins. That slides a lot, you know, and... Um, you know, but Connor can, he can carry that. He, he'd prefer to be a feeder. <laughs> he loves being Mr. Unselfish. Um, but yeah, he's, he continues to earn that moniker, Mr. May, doesn't he? Well, McCabe looks like he's fully capable of taking the baton. Oh, yeah. Do you have any questions in your mind about how he would be able to handle the stage because he looked like he was lying in yeah, it, it's interesting. We, we talked to the team last week and I, and after the St. Joe's game. And I said, fellas, I know, it's, again, it's just it's another game of lacrosse, but it feels different, doesn't it, when it's May and it's win in advance and lose and die and the season's over. And knowing that, how much experience we have in the month of May, how many games we've won in May. And I looked at the young guys. I said, that, that's it. Like, when our older guys were young, they leaned on the older guys, and he gets passed along. Um, and overall, our young guys didn't play great against St. Joe's. Uh, I thought our short stick committees were a little hesitant. And, and so to answer your question, when you look at today, it's like, OK, McCabe, you've had one NCAA tournament game under your belt. You're no longer a first year. And wow, did he step up. I remember looking at Coach Cassis a couple times, like, is he trying to take over too much? And Kevin's like, we need him. We need him to. You know, we're not scoring a lot of goals right now. You know, Peyton's not having his normal day, and Schutz isn't having his normal day. He, we, he needs to. I'm like, okay. And he rose to the moment, didn't he? 
you know, he, clearly the fourth goal that he scored didn't go in, you know, or, it, you know, he was in the goal mouth. But that's, that was just a great example of, like, McCabe was, he was here to win the game, not simply manage it or try not to lose the game. And that intensity, that belief in self is why he was the number one recruit in the country and uh, why we're very fortunate to have him. Well, as you talk about the short week and facing Barron next week, a familiar opponent who you've seen over the next couple of years, or over the last couple of years, excuse me. Yeah. Talk about that familiarity in that opponent and if that helps you over the short week. Right, I think we got a, we got a stretch run here of us, Virginia versus Maryland in the NCAA tournament. And I think the only year we missed was last year, right? You know, and um, it's, um, it's, it's, it's becoming a, uh, uh, an, a, a relationship in May. <laughs> uh, I'm glad we play in the regular season, too. Um, they got us last year. We were fortunate to win at Bird Stadium this year. Sorry, I know it's called Seku now. Um, but, um, you know, that, that's just a tribute to the incredible coaching and team that John Tillman has put together uh, year in, year out. 10 and one in the quarterfinals? I mean, that, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And so it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's a tremendous amount of respect for him and his program and his men. And um, I'm sure just like we were excited about a chance at redemption with Hopkins, certainly defensively, because we gave up 16 goals down there in early March in Charlottesville. I know, uh, I know we've we'll, we'll got a team that's playing great lacrosse right now, watching what Maryland did against Princeton and, and Duke. And, um, and, and again, they're going to want that. They got that redemption edge on their side, too, don't they, this time? Lars, you guys have not been the dominant face-off team this year. It's been you know, 50% of the round. Mm -hmm. Today you were very good there. Yeah. How important was that? It's so important. I mean, we watched that yesterday. It was all about possessions. I'm, I'm, I'm reading, like, Washington Elite beat Salisbury? What? And then some face-off guy at WNL won 70% of the face-offs and scored a bunch of goals. So many examples this past this weekend of possession is so critical when you get to this level of how good the goal, uh, the goal scores are and how much shooting. Anthony Gobriel and Thomas Colucci, along with Ben Ware, you know, flying in there and picking up 10 ground balls. Um, warriors, absolute warriors, and big unknowns. Petey LaSalle. You know, exit stage left last year, and I was like, ooh, what's Virginia going to do at the face-off decks this year? And Ben Ware wasn't even on the team last year. And you bring in two transfers along Ben Ware returning as a mountain man uh, with a big old stick. Um, yeah, they have, they have more than filled in a void. And then today, man, massive for us to keep that ball away from that Hopkins offense. You're trying to get Ben talked about Chase Hager earlier. Yeah. So much Talk about ben Chase. <laughs> I mean... We didn't want to worry about matchups too much because then we felt like John Crowley, the offense coordinator for Hopkins, could start getting comfortable and then, okay, let me set up this play because I know they're going to put the pole on Bauer and 16 is going to get Collison. So we tried to mix it up a bit during the game. But as the game got into that fourth quarter, it was like, Chase Yeager, you have Collison. You know, this is a guy who's killed us in the past. Uh, last year at Homewood, I think he had four. Down there in Charlottesville this year, he had four, felt like eight. You know, it was like, all right, are we really shorting Collison? Chase Yeager has been fantastic. And not only was he able to neutralize, but taking the ball away, too. Um, what a gift we have in Chase Yeager. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, I mean, first of all, what's got to get better? Our man down defense. We're, we're not having a good man down defensive year. Um, that's got to get better. But what has gotten better is our crease play. If you watched us play Hopkins March 2nd, and then we came up here and played on the same field against Towson March 9, we got picked apart inside. And so since then, we've made a significant progress of our presence in the crease, owning the crease, you know, the old, old school survival drill is the name of the drill. Um, what also that is relies on is better on-ball defense when the ball's behind the goal. You can see we put Cole Kastner on Angelus, number 23 today, and we're not sliding. 
you know, for Cole there. And uh, he got picked off a couple times, which is a little surprising. You know, his basketball background gives Cole such an advantage of being used to picks and playing through picks. But he got picked off a couple times, and then you, you hold your, you know, Oh God! You, you, you're uh, as a defensive coach, you got my uh, heart, my throat there. Like, oh boy, this is not going to be good. You got a 50% shooter who's got 50 assists or whatever, and uh, and uh, I know he got us when he got us in the third quarter and when he hit Degnan for that step down. But um, but yeah, so we've been better on ball and we've been better in the crease. That's been that's been mating improvements. But again, the data shows we're still not there. In a couple games there in April, we gave up 18 goals. We're good. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys.